What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler, and what you can't see on your screen right now is that my entire studio, both the floor, the tables, pretty much any surface that was free, is completely covered in sneakers. And today we are going to take a look at every single sneaker. It's gonna take a minute. But before we actually jump into this, I just wanted to let you know that the We Are Underdogs Seth Fowler Origin sneaker is officially available for sale. It's been on pre-order for like the last two or three months while we actually built the pairs, but now all the pairs are done and you can buy a pair and have it shipped to you immediately. If you pre-ordered a pair, which first of all, thank you so much for doing that. It seriously means the world to me that people are rocking a sneaker that I designed. That's crazy, but you should have already gotten your shipping confirmation and if you haven't yet, you will get it in the next day or two. Also, shout out to the first 100 people who ordered the numbered pairs. The numbered pairs sold out in like the first six hours, which was absolutely insane. I'd love to see what number you got, so if you got a pair, make sure to send me a picture on Instagram. If you haven't grabbed a pair of the We Are Underdogs Seth Fowler Origins, I've left a link to do so in the top of the description, and if you want to grab a pair, make sure to do it soon because sizes are selling out. And also, just for reference, this is what a pair looks like after you've worn it for a month. This shoe has seen some wear, and I'm pretty happy with the way that the materials look after you wear it for a while. But we'll get back to the sneaker in a bit, now let's jump into the entire sneaker collection, which by the way, that's what this video is if you couldn't read the title. I say this every single time I do a sneaker collection video, but I'm trying to downsize my collection, but this time it's for real. I'm trying to get a down payment for a house and uh, I need to get rid of a lot of pairs. I mean a lot of pairs. I've got over a hundred right now, which is way too many for any one person to have, and uh, I need to cut it down to like 50. I guess I don't need to cut it down to 50, but I really should because I feel like that's a more reasonable number. It's still insane, but at the same time it's not as insane as like 150 pairs, so um, that's the goal. I will be selling a lot of the sneakers in today's video on my website, which is also linked in the description below. It's SethFowlerStore.com if you want to check it out. A lot of these sneakers need to go to better homes than I can give them right now because I just can't wear them all the time, and um, most of them are in good condition. So to start things off, I'm going to show you all my New Balance collection, which I'm not going to spend too much time on because I just did a dedicated video like four days ago on it. And the first shoe out of my pretty small but rapidly growing New Balance collection is the New Balance 990 V5. Definitely a dad shoe, but it's mad comfy and it comes in every size. It's an awesome shoe to pick up if you're looking for that everyday sneaker. Then we've got the New Balance Herschel 801, which comes in this rock colorway with sort of a dark salmon midsole, I guess. It's a good hiking shoe, it looks decent, but it's not something that I would wear every day. After that, we've got a pretty decent basketball sneaker. This is the New Balance Omnis in the white and gold colorway. I really love this shoe. I think it looks great. I think it's a solid basketball performer. But my one gripe is that this shoe isn't really white and gold. It's more of like a white and beige or white and brown colorway. But uh, if my only complaint is the naming, not a bad thing. Next is the New Balance 827 Amy Leon Door or ALD. I just picked up this sneaker like last week. I haven't had a chance to wear it yet, but I'm really stoked on it. And out of the three colorways that dropped, the yellow is probably my favorite. Then we've got one of my personal favorite collaborations from last year, the New Balance Bodega 997S. This is the No Bad Days colorway. There's also a No Days Off colorway, which I like just as much as this colorway, but the resale price for that pair is stupid. It's a crazy looking sneaker, but I love it. And surprisingly, it's one of my most worn sneakers in my collection. And then finally, rounding off my New Balance collection with one of the best sneaker releases of this year, and in my personal opinion, one of the best collaborations of this year, we've got the Joe Fresh Goods New Balance 998. This collab is just so well thought out. It's the anatomy of a heart, or that's the name of the collaboration, and it kind of looks like you're inside of a heart. You've got all the little ventricles and stuff like that. It released during All-Star Weekend. The colorway is insane. The material quality is insane. And when you switch out the laces with these blue laces that come in the box, it makes the shoe pop. I just, I love it. And I've worn this shoe so, so so much. Now let's move on to a couple different brands that I only have a few pairs of. And the first of those brands is Crocs. Yes, I do have a pair of Crocs. This is the Chinatown Market Crocs that I picked up at Complex Con last year. It's an interesting pair of sneakers. It's more comfortable than I thought it would be. I don't mind it. I've worn it a couple times. It's all right. After that, we've got some Reeboks, the first of which is the Reebok OTH collaboration. OTH, or Off the Hook, is a sneaker boutique based in Montreal, and this colorway is based on when the snow starts to melt in Montreal and you've got some green grass peeking up through the dirty snow. It's an interesting concept. I think the shoe overall is a decent looking sneaker, and it's a good collaboration. After that, we've got one of my favorite Reeboks of all time, the Allen Iverson Question Mid. This Question Mid comes in the two-way colorway. The left side of the pair comes in red, and the right side comes in blue, obviously because it's a Sixers shoe and Allen Iverson was a huge Sixers player. I love AI, I love the Sixers, and I love this question mid. I think it's a dope pair of sneakers and I've worn it to like three or four Sixers games since I got it. Then we've got currently my only pair of Vans, the Vans Skate High OTW. I love Vans, I've always loved Vans, I used to work at Vans, I've probably had over a hundred pairs of Vans in my lifetime, and I think this might be one of my favorite pairs ever. It's a really cool sort of summery California themed sneaker. I love the pinks, the oranges, the greens, the yellows. 
I love everything about this shoe. I think it's such an easy shoe to wear, even though it's such a crazy colored sneaker. Then after that, we've actually got my only pair of Converse's at the moment, the Essentials Converse Chuck High. Essentials is part of Jerry Lorenzo's Fear of God brand, and this is an Essentials collaboration. There were three different colorways that dropped, a black and cream, a white and black, and then this sort of gray and cream color. I think this is my least favorite color out of the group that dropped. Um, I was really going for that black pair, but it's still a dope looking pair of shoes. I love the way that the laces wrap around the upper, and uh, hey, it's a solid pair of Converse. Then after that, I've got a Bodega Saucony collaboration. Saucony is a solid sneaker brand and Bodega does excellent collaborations, so I think this was a smart move for them to collaborate. And even though this isn't a shoe that I would wear every day, it's kind of nuts looking. I'm still very thankful that they thought of me to send out the sneaker to and uh, I'm stoked on it. I think it's a cool shoe. Then we've got a great pair of stability running shoes with my Hoka One One Arahi 3s. It's not pretty but it gets the job done. It's a solid performance running sneaker and it's very stable and that's why I picked it up. If you're into running shoes you probably already know about Hoka but if you don't they're a great brand to check out. Next we've got the first shoe that I ever designed that actually made it into production and not only made it into production but sold out and that's the Planters Peanuts Crunch Force Ones. This is definitely a promo shoe. It's not the kind of shoe that you could wear every single day, but I still really love the way this shoe came out. I obviously worked with Planners Peanuts and Garrison to make this sneaker come to life, and I'm really proud of it. I feel like the overall construction of the shoe and the materials that were used are top notch. Design wise, I was definitely going for sort of an old school high top basketball look, and I feel like that's definitely what this shoe looks like, and I'm proud of it. I don't love the color scheme, but you can't really change the color scheme of a brand, so at the end of the day, I didn't have much choice, but uh, I still think it's a great looking sneaker, and I still wear it pretty regularly. Not every day, but maybe once a month. A cool feature that you might not know about is that when you first bought this shoe, it comes with a monocle hang tag, which I thought was so cool. Not my idea, it was Gary Vaynerchuk or VaynerMedia's idea, um, and they did a great job sort of marketing this shoe, so shout out to them. Next, we've got the John Geiger 002. This is a high top, sort of neoprene style sock sneaker. I'm really into it, I feel like it's a very clean look. Shout out to John Geiger for just creating his own sneaker brand, that's so cool. I also love the green accents on this shoe, I think they're a nice touch. Next is the Staple Pigeon Timberland collaboration and it comes in a pretty wild orange, purple, and brown colorway. Funny story, my neighbor is obsessed with this sneaker and he keeps trying to buy it off me, um, but I'm never gonna sell it because I think it's dope. Sorry, Lou, but uh, that might be him being mad about me not selling it. <laughs> It's a dope shoe. I wore it a lot during the winter, and I think it's a really cool collaboration. Next, moving on to a brand that I've got a good amount of sneakers of, we've got Puma. And the first Puma shoe that I'm going to show you guys is the Puma Sky Modern Trevor Project. This is a very bright white and orange basketball sneaker. I believe it was limited to only 200 pairs, which is kind of crazy. And Puma sent it my way, so shout out to Puma. I really appreciate that. I've yet to wear this shoe. I think it's a, a nice look, but um, it's something that you have to wear on the right occasion. You can't wear this shoe every day. Then we've got the Puma Style Rider or Future Rider. I always get those two mixed up. I think it's a Style Rider. I could be wrong. I don't remember exactly, but it's one of the two. And actually, while I have this one out, I'll pull out the other one. Here is the Future Rider, I think. It's one of the two. I mean, one of these is the Future Rider and one of them is a Style Rider. I'm not exactly sure which one. They're both pretty similar sneakers. But uh, I think I like this one better because I like the colorway better. Next up, we've got the Puma Clyde Court in this really cool white and gray colorway. This is actually one of my most worn Pumas. I wear this shoe pretty often. I think it's a really clean look. It's also actually a performance basketball sneaker. And while I've never worn this shoe on court, it's still a great lifestyle shoe and that's mainly what I wear it for. Oh, and before I forget, shout out to Puma for sending me this shoe for my engagement. I thought that was really cool. And actually, the next shoe that we'll take a look at is the Puma RSX Toys, which they actually also sent me for my engagement. This is a wild looking sneaker. It comes in primary colors and is very obviously toy themed. I definitely dig it. It's a comfortable shoe and if I'm having a day where I want to rock something that's bright, <laughs> this is a great way to go. Then we've got the Puma Ralph Sampson in this really clean white and purple colorway, which I believe they sent to me for International Women's Day. It's a dope shoe. I have yet to wear it, and they actually sent Jordan a pair too, so we can match. So that's that's very nice of them. Thank you guys. After that, we've got the Puma Thunder Spectra, which was one of the first Puma sneakers I bought in years. I love this shoe. I've worn it a bunch, and I think this is one of the best sneakers that they've dropped in the last, like, decade. I think it's an incredible shoe. And you can actually grab it right now for pretty cheap. I paid resale for this pair, but you don't have to. And then the final pair of Pumas that I have in my collection is this crazy Puma MCM sample. As you can tell by the side of the sneaker, it's obviously an MCM collaboration because you've got the MCM logo. You've also got this gold MCM tag right at the top of the tongue, which I think is so sick. And in addition to that, you've also got a sample tag on the sock liner of the shoe. This is an insanely dope sample. It's crazy. It's out there. And I mean, it's an MCM collab, that's wild. I honestly don't know if I can ever wear this shoe because I don't know if I wanna undies it, but it's a dope sneaker nonetheless. Then moving on to Adidas, I've got a triple white pair of Stan Smiths that I believe released last summer, and uh, I've worn like once or twice. It's a solid pair of shoes. I don't like it as much as the pair that has the green around the heel, but 
It's a nice looking pair of sneakers. Up next, we've got another pair of sneakers from that same summer release. It is also all white. It also has the sizes on the top of the tongue. I got this crazy huge package from Adidas, um, probably June of last year that had all these sneakers in it. I think it was nine pairs in total. I've given away a bunch of pairs because I just couldn't wear them all. This is the pair that I've probably worn the most out of that pack. And what's ironic is that I do not remember the name of this shoe. But it's a nice looking pair of sneakers. I like the uh, sort of off-white midsole. It, it contrasts the upper of the shoe really nicely and it's a comfortable sneaker. Again, don't know what it's called, but it's dope and uh, I plan to continue rocking it. After that, we've got the Low Top Rivalries, also from that same pack. For some reason, it's kind of curved on the bottom. I haven't actually worn it yet, so maybe that curve will sort of work itself out when I uh, wear the shoe, but I really like the Rivalry Highs. I've never actually owned a pair of Rivalry Lows and uh, I'm excited to wear it eventually whenever I get a chance. Then we've got a pair of Adidas Terex hiking shoes that come with a full length boost midsole. It's an incredibly comfortable sneaker. I love the way it feels on foot. I've only hiked in this shoe once, but I've worn it a couple times other than that. It might not be an everyday shoe, but it's a good one to have in the collection, especially if you hike a lot, or even if you just hike once in a blue moon like I do. Next up is a recent pickup with the Adidas 2K ZX Boost. You might've already caught my video of me unboxing this sneaker from a couple days ago. It's a good looking pair of sneakers. It's definitely one that kind of flies a little bit under the radar. It's definitely a a cleaner and simpler shoe from Adidas. I think it's incredibly comfortable. I think the upper is nice, especially with the uh, mint green accents on the laces, on the Adidas three stripes, and also on the heel. And uh, it's just a great sneaker all around. It's something that I'm excited to wear. I have yet to wear it, so I'm um, stoked on it. Then we've got a pair of sample Continental 80s in the Arizona Ice Tea theme. This shoe is a collaboration with Arizona Ice Tea, and as you will see, they actually sent me a couple different pairs. This was the first pair from the collab that I received. And to be honest, it's probably my least favorite. I don't love this uh, design on the side, but I don't hate it. I definitely think it's mad cool that Adidas sent me some samples though. So shout out to Adidas and shout out to Arizona for that. Then we've got another pair of Adidas Arizona Continental 80s, this time in the green tea theme. This is probably the craziest pair of Continental 80s I've ever seen. I think it's a dope sneaker, but I think this design actually works a little bit better on the Young Ones, which you guys will see in a second. After that, we've got a pair of Adidas Young Ones, which is also an Arizona collaboration. In my opinion, this is the cleanest shoe from the collaboration. It just looks so good and it has such subtle Arizona hits, like right there on the forefoot and also on the tongue, which actually every pair has that 99 cents on the tongue. But it's such a clean look with the colorway and the simplicity of the shoe. I just really, really like it. And then finally, the last shoe from the collaboration, we've got the Arizona Adidas Young One in the green tea theme. I got these shoes a little bit early from Adidas, so I actually wore these to Complex Con, which is pretty cool because everyone was like, damn, look at those shoes. Probably not just because they were early, but also because they are wild looking. But uh, uh, Adidas sent me two pairs of these, so I have one pair that's uh, unworn and one pair that's worn, and it's um, probably my favorite or second favorite sneaker from the collaboration because of how nuts it looks. Then moving into the Ultra Boost, we've got the Ultra Boost 19, which I've got to say is probably the most comfortable shoe in my collection. Even though I don't love the way this sneaker looks, this shoe is just so insanely comfortable. The prime knit is so soft, the boost is thicker than the previous Ultra Boost, and it's still just as soft, but a little bit more stable because of the heel counter. It's a great shoe. Next, we've got the follow-up to that shoe, the Adidas Ultra Boost 20 ISS. I actually went to New York to do a promo shoot for this shoe with Adidas, and they ended up gifting me this pair, so pretty excited about that. And I think the colorway itself is also pretty solid. I love that iridescent bluish purple on the midsole. That looks so sick. The Ultra Boost 20 is definitely a comfortable shoe, but in my opinion, I just don't think it's as comfortable as the Ultra Boost 19. It's still not bad. It's still insanely comfortable, but it's just not the same. I don't know what it is about it. Maybe it's because there just isn't prime in the heel. I don't know. However, I do think it's a better looking shoe. And then after that, we've actually got a sample pair of Ultra Boost 20s. This seems like just a simple black and white colorway, but to my knowledge, this colorway is never actually released. There have been similar colorways, but never anything exactly like this. And what's interesting about this is that I didn't even know it was a sample when I first got it. And I think if you saw anyone walking around in the shoe, you would never guess. The only thing that would tip you off is that the size tag says sample on it, and that's pretty much it. And after that, we've got another super worn pair of Ultra Boost. In fact, I'm not even sure the insoles to this shoe are. That's kind of sketchy, actually. Um, this is the Ultra Boost 3.0 in the maroon colorway. This is one of my favorite Ultra Boost colorways of all time. I just love maroon. And this is also just one of those pairs of shoes that I just keep by the door because it's so easy to slip on and off. And then we've got the A Kind of Guys or ACOG Ultra Boost, which I think is probably one of the most underrated Ultra Boost collaborations ever. It's such an interesting sneaker. I love the way this shoe looks. It almost has a moccasin feel to it. The colorway is so different and interesting. You've also got this sort of tie-dye outsole. It's 
such a crazy shoe and I love it. Also, I feel like the resale was never crazy on these. I feel like you can get a pair of these for pretty cheap now. Next, we've got another recent pickup with the re-release of the Ultra Boost 1.0 in the triple white or core white colorway. I genuinely think this is my favorite Ultra Boost of all time. It's so simple, it's so clean. It's Kanye's favorite Ultra Boost, or at least it seemed to be in that picture, I don't know, but um, it's a dope look and I absolutely love it. Also, this release just goes to show you that there is still some Ultra Boost hype because this shoe sold out pretty much instantly. Continuing on, we've got a very special shoe that I worked on with Ubik, the Adidas Pharrell Boost You Wear, Seth Fowler, Ubik collaboration, I guess. I don't really know what to call it. I went to an event at Ubik a couple years ago and they had the opportunity to actually match up different uppers with different outsoles and I chose a Pharrell upper to go with a Boost You Wear outsole and to be honest, I really dig the way it looks. As you can probably tell, it was a pretty quick glue job and this upper wasn't supposed to go with this midsole and outsole so it doesn't fit perfectly but I have worn this shoe a lot and I think for a custom sneaker, it's pretty solid. And then after that, we've got the friends and family Adidas Ubik Boost You Wear 2.0. Shout out to Ubik for being awesome. They're based in Philly. They have a store in Philly and one in Washington, D.C., I believe. I go to their store all the time when I could before this quarantine started happening, and they're just awesome people. And uh, I'm really thankful that they actually thought of me to send me a pair of the friends and family Boost You Wears. Then moving into my 4D sneakers, we've got the Adidas Alpha Edge 4D. This is one of Adidas's first few 4D shoes, and if you're not familiar with what 4D is, it's this green midsole, which is actually 3D printed. 4D might not be as comfortable as Boost, but it's still a really cool technology, and I definitely think it's the future. And the 4D Alpha Edge, or the Alpha Edge 4D in this white colorway, looks really solid. After that, we've got the Pharrell Human Race 4Ds. This is a pretty similar sneaker. In fact, I feel like it uses the exact same 4D midsole. I really like the upper. It comes in this nice olive prime knit, and uh, it's a cool step forward for Pharrell. I feel like he picked a cool silhouette to collab on. And then rounding off my 4D collection, we've got the first pair of 4D sneakers I ever owned, the Futurecraft 4Ds. This might be one of my favorite pairs of Adidas ever. I just feel like it's such a clean look. It looks like an Ultra Boost stuck on top of a 4D shoe. It was my first pair of 4D sneakers ever, the first time I ever experienced this 3D printed technology underfoot. It's also surprisingly rare too. I've had a hard time finding another pair in my size. Now moving on to the Yeezys in my collection. I've got to be honest, I have a lot less than I used to, and that's for good reason because I actually don't wear Yeezys that much anymore. But to start things off, we've got the Yeezy 500 in the salt colorway. This is a shoe that I never thought that I would like, but once I started wearing it and rocking it with some different outfits, I just fell in love with it. It's mad comfortable. It's a weird looking shoe, but it surprisingly goes with a lot of different things. I only have one pair of Yeezy 500s at the moment. I don't feel like I need any other pairs. I'm happy with this one colorway. I think there aren't really any other colorways out there that really do it for me, but it's a solid pair of sneakers and I plan to continue rocking this pair pretty often. In addition to the salts, I've also got the Yeezy 500 high slates. This is a pretty solid sneaker, especially for winter. It's not something I would ever wear, you know, in the spring or summer, maybe in the fall, but um, it's definitely a dope looking shoe. It's just as comfortable as the other Yeezy 500s, but it is kind of difficult to rock if you're wearing short pants. Like you can't wear this with shorts. Next, we've got one of my favorite Yeezys of all time. I absolutely love this shoe, and that's the Yeezy 700 Wave Runner. I pre-ordered this shoe back in 2017, and I've had it ever since. I love this sneaker. I wear it all the time. It's mad comfortable. It looks crazy, but it's not too crazy crazy, like it's really easy to rock, and it's kind of the epitome of the perfect dad shoe, at least in my opinion. Speaking of Yeezy 700s, I've got the Yeezy 700 V3 as I L. This shoe is a really cool change in design direction for the Yeezy brand. I think it marks the sort of more organic look of Yeezy sneakers, and as a Yeezy 700, it's not my favorite. I feel like it's a good looking sneaker. I love the glow on the upper, but it's not very comfortable. They actually got rid of the boost on this sneaker. And not only that, it fits really, really tight. It's super futuristic though, which I like, and I'm excited to see what Kanye and Adidas do next. After that, we've got a classic with the Adidas Yeezy 750 in the chocolate colorway. I actually won this shoe on the Adidas Confirmed app, which was actually the second pair of 750s that I got in the Confirmed app. I got the OG pair when it first had that New York exclusive release. It's a dope looking pair of sneakers. I've worn it a couple times and it's actually one of my favorite pairs of Yeezys. I feel like this is such an interesting, different kind of shoe and I really wish Kanye and Adidas would bring out more 750s, but I feel like the 750s are kind of dead. Then of course, I've got a couple pairs of 350s, the first of which is the 350 V2 Statics. This was the first 350 V2 with the translucent stripe running down the side and while the pattern on the shoe was crazy, the colorway definitely brought this shoe down a little bit and made it a lot more wearable. After that, we've got the Adidas Yeezy 350 V2 red stripe, which was one of the first 350 V2s to come out. I think it was maybe the 
second or third colorway to come out. I could be wrong about that. And I just love the way it looks. It's a super clean sneaker. I've obviously worn this shoe a lot. You can tell by the boost and the heel drag, but it's still a pretty clean shoe and I made sure to keep up on cleaning it. So it stayed in pretty good condition. And then rounding off my Yeezy collection, we've got the Adidas Yeezy Boost 380. In a lot of ways, this shoe is sort of the upgraded version of the 350 V2. It's a much more comfortable and wearable sneaker. It's got a lot more boost in the midsole and also a wider toe area so you don't feel as crunched. Design-wise though, it's definitely got that more organic look, but I feel like it's just not as good looking as the 350 V2s. And that kind of sucks because overall, Oh, it is a better sneaker. The 380s might not be my favorite Yeezy, but they're still a good shoe and they're still very comfortable. Then moving on to a brand that's kind of special to me, mainly because I have a collaboration with them, and that brand is We Are Underdogs. We Are Underdogs is a Portuguese shoe company that creates super high quality shoes because all their materials are excellent and sourced locally, and not only that, all their shoes are handmade. This is one of the first shoes that I got from them. This is the 317, I believe, and what's interesting about this shoe is that it actually shares a cup sole with my shoe. Next up is the Turbo, which is one of my favorite shoes that they created. I actually wore this shoe to Portugal to check out the factory and um, it's a dope looking sneaker. It's definitely different and that's what I like about it. After that, we've got one of their signature models designed by Kato Choi called the Kama. And We Are Underdogs actually makes a huge selection of colors in this shoe just because it's so popular for them. Then we've got a collab from fellow YouTuber Bluemon, the We Are Underdogs Meraki One. This is a super clean, classic looking sneaker. This is my favorite colorway out of the three that he produced, the tan and brown colorway. It has sort of the uh, Louis Vuitton vibe vibe to it, which I love. It's a super easy shoe to rock, especially when you're trying to dress up, and I think he did a great job with this collaboration. And then finally, we move on to my sneaker, the We Are Underdog Seth Fowler Origin. This collab was totally a dream come true for me. It's absolutely unbelievable that a shoe with my signature on the back actually exists in the world and people are buying it. That's crazy to me. I've talked about this shoe a bunch on my channel, so if you would like to check out any of the videos where I designed the sneaker or fly to Portugal to actually have the sample made, make sure to check them out. There'll be a link to those at the top of the screen. And again, if you guys would like to grab a pair for yourself, I've left a link to this shoe in the top of the description. This pair is the final sample. This is basically the production version of the shoe, and because of that, I've been trying to wear this shoe as much as possible. In fact, this shoe's gotten pretty beat up, but the more beat up it gets, the better it looks, at least in my opinion. But in addition to this sample, we also have the very first sample of the shoe, which I flew all the way out to Portugal to have made. As you can tell, there was a lot of things done to the original sample to make it the final production version of the shoe. For example, lowering this uh, huge blue leather panel right here, changing up some of the proportions around the back of the shoe, extending the tongue, changing some of the color of the leather, it just needed to be adjusted. As much as I love this sample because it was the first sample, it's not a great looking shoe and when you compare it to the actual final, it's a good thing we made those changes. But not only do I have the first sample and the final sample of the shoe, but I also have the second sample which I guess I should have talked about before I talked about either of those, but um, this is the version that is basically the final, but it doesn't have my signature on the back or my branding on the insole, and that's just because we were trying to work out the proportions of the shoe and really get to that final shape. Other than the lack of Seth Fowler branding on this shoe, it is pretty much the final. So here's kind of the progression from first sample to second sample to the final, and uh, I can't believe I'm holding a shoe with my signature on the back. That's so crazy. Thank you all so much for just watching me and supporting the channel and just making this shoe a reality, because if it wasn't for you guys, I would never have had this opportunity, so thank you guys so much for that. You guys literally made my dream come true. After that, we move on to Nike, and the first shoe in my Nike collection is the Nike Pegasus 35. This is a pretty solid everyday running shoe, and I've worn it a bunch, both for runs and just general day-to-day -day wear. It's gotten pretty beat up, and uh, I have a replacement for it now, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this pair. Speaking of that replacement, I've got the Nike Pegasus 37. This shoe is an insane upgrade over the 35 and the 36. It's incredibly comfortable. It features a full-length React midsole with four-foot zoom. I absolutely love it, and it's a shoe that I plan to wear a lot. Moving on to more of the basketball sneakers, we've got the Nike Adapt BB. Currently, this is my one and only pair of auto lacing sneakers. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to keep it because I wore it a bunch when I first got it, and I haven't really worn it since. It's still a really cool technology. I don't think I keep it charged, so uh, it's obvious I don't wear it too much, but it's kind of cool to have a self-lacing pair of sneakers. Next is an important shoe to me because it reminds me of my mom. It's the KD6 Ant Pearl. I love this shoe. I love the way it looks. I love sort of the meaning behind it, and I think that's why it's so important to me. I don't wear it that often because I just want to keep it in good condition so I can keep it forever. It's an awesome sneaker, and I don't think I'm ever going to let this shoe leave my collection. Then we've got another pair of KDs with the KD12 YouTube. The colorway on this shoe is insane. I love the little details like the play button and the pause button and the video will play after ad tab on the back. It's a really cool sneaker because one, it's a YouTube themed sneaker and that's kind of, I guess my boss is YouTube. <laughs> 
I don't really, I guess that's what it is. But they actually sent this to me, which I really appreciated. So huge shout out to YouTube for sending me this pair of sneakers. I think it's an awesome shoe and I don't know if I can ever wear it because I just want to keep it all fresh looking. Next up, we've got the Westbrook 0.1s, which were actually customized by Jordan brand artist Jew working on projects. I went to a Jordan brand event like two years ago and I had the chance to talk to him at the event and actually have him customize my sneakers. And what's super cool about this is that he actually customized his pair of shoes just like he customized Russell Westbrook's pair of shoes. And we are the only two people that have this exact customization, which I think is so crazy. Also, shout out to Jew working on projects. He's an awesome guy. Next up, we've got the Air Jordan 32 Low in the Gatorade colorway. This was actually a pair of shoes that Jordan Brand gifted me maybe like two or three years ago. They sent it in this insane package that had this shoe, a pair of sixes, and a bunch of clothing. It's funny because that video came out when I had like maybe 30 or 40,000 subscribers. So shout out to Jordan Brand for reaching out to me mad early. I really appreciate it. But uh, my video got like 30,000 views and Cousteau's got like 3.4 million. So um, still a little salty about that. <laughs> I'm not. It's not a big deal. Speaking of sneakers in my current basketball rotation, we've got the Air Jordan 34. This is just such an insane performance basketball shoe. It's got this really cool cutout in the uh, midfoot right there, which I'm not exactly sure why it's there, but it's cool looking, so I like it. I've worn it a couple times. I've only played in it once. I would like to play in it a lot more. Obviously, when things start to get back to normal, I'll hopefully be able to do that, but it's an awesome pair of sneakers, and if you're looking for a solid basketball performance shoe, this is a great way to go. Moving on from performance basketball sneakers into more lifestyle sneakers, we've got the Nike Air Monarch, which doesn't really need any more description because it's kind of just a dad shoe in the truest sense of a dad shoe. It's, um... It's actually all right, I don't mind it. Next, we've got the Nike ACG Dog Mountains, which are kind of my go-to hiking shoes at the moment. I've worn this shoe to hike in probably more than any other pair of sneakers that I've hiked in. It's an awesome sneaker, it's very comfortable, it grips really well, the traction is excellent on this sneaker, and it's not overdone. Like, there isn't too much going on to where you feel like you're wearing this boot. It's a sort of lightweight, low-top shoe that is really easy to rock. It's a great hiking shoe, and it's definitely worth grabbing if you're into hiking. Then moving on to a shoe that I've just recently reviewed, we've got the Ben Simmons Nike Blazer Mid. Ben Simmons is an insane, basketball player. He plays for my favorite team. He's currently my favorite basketball player. And so when he released a sneaker, I had to grab it. The colorway on this shoe is solid and I believe it's actually based on the Australian flag or at least that's what someone in the comments said. I'm not 100% sure, but it's a nice looking pair of sneakers that I'm excited to rock. Next up, we've got the NYC Air Force One Connects. So from a distance, this just looks like a standard pair of Air Force Ones, but what's interesting about this shoe is that it actually has a chip in the heel that you can scan with your phone and when the shoe first came out, you could actually buy sneakers by like unlocking them through scanning that chip. That promo lasted about a month and now this shoe does nothing. So um, that kind of sucks because it's more expensive than a standard pair of Air Force Ones, but I do have to say that the quality of materials on this shoe is better than a standard pair, so that's a plus, I guess. Next up, we've got the Nike Flyknit Lunar One Plus Supreme, which was actually given to me by the one and only Big Boy Chang. Thank you so much, man, for this pair. This is a truly insane gift. This sneaker is one of those grails that you never think you're gonna be able to have, but the fact that Big Boy Chang thought of me and gave this to me is just truly incredible, and uh, I'm never gonna let this sneaker leave my collection. After that, we've got a Texas Longhorn-themed Air Max One customized by the one and only Jeff Dank. He did an incredible job with this custom. The materials that he used are very, very premium. And while I don't love fur sneakers, this is the one pair in my collection and the one pair that I actually really like. Next, we've got another custom sent to me by EA Sports and Nike, and it's actually Miami Super Bowl themed. It's a super clean Air Max 90 that comes in primarily white with splatter print on the midsole. It's cool because the right shoe comes in red and the left shoe comes in blue. And it's one of those sneakers that I don't know if I'm ever going to wear just because it's such a cool collector's item. But uh, I think they did a great job, and I'm really thankful to them for sending this out. After that, we've got my pair of 2015 Air Max 90s in the OG infrared colorway. This is a shoe that I've almost worn to the ground, and it's really special to me because I wore this on my last trip to Malaysia back in 2000 and was it 15 or 16? I don't remember, but it's got a lot of great memories tied to it. It's very dirty, and I probably shouldn't be holding it anymore because it's gross. Next up, we've got the Sean Witherspoon Air Max 197s. I'm sure you guys know everything there is to know about this sneaker. I think Sean Witherspoon and Nike did a great job in this collaboration, and I love the fact that the more you wear it, the better it looks. Now, I've only worn this probably three times so far just because, like you guys have seen, I have a ridiculously huge collection that I just can't wear all my sneakers all the time, but uh, I do plan to wear it a lot in the future and probably a lot this summer if we can go outside. So <laughs> After that, we have a DS pair of sneakers that I might actually consider letting go. And this shoe is obviously the Off-White Air Max 90 in the Desert Ore colorway. This is honestly a dope pair of sneakers and I don't know why I'm considering getting rid of it because I just think it's such a cool look, but I haven't worn it. I've had it for almost a year at this point and I feel like if I'm not going to wear it now, I'm probably never going to wear it. So, um... 
I might have to let this one go. Continuing with the off-white sneakers, we've got the off-white Nike blazer in black. I love Nike blazers, and this is such an easy Nike blazer to rock. I've worn it so many times, and I think you can't really get much cleaner than an all-black blazer. Also, I love the way the swoosh spills over onto the midsole. I think that's so cool. Next up, we've got the off-white Air Force One in the Volt colorway. This shoe is loud as hell, and it's crazy, but I like it for that reason. When I first saw this sneaker, though, I wasn't a huge fan of it. Then I bought my fiance a pair, saw how good it looked on her, and I was like, well, now I gotta get a pair, so... <laughs> I shelled out the money and grabbed it. It's an awesome sneaker and I plan to keep this for a long time. After that, we've got one of my favorite sneakers in my collection, the off-white Nike Presto. I've worn this shoe so much, the bottom is wearing off, it's creased like crazy. This is really genuinely one of my favorite sneakers, not because it's so hyped up, but because of how good it looks and how easy it is to rock. Not only that, it's insanely comfortable. It's also probably one of the most hyped up sneakers in my collection and probably my second favorite pair of off-white shoes that I own. Then moving on to dunks, but continuing with the off-white theme, we've got the off-white Nike Dunk in pine green. This shoe is wild and I paid way too much money for it to get an early review and as much as I love this sneaker, I've only worn it once so it's barely worn down on the bottom and I think I might actually be letting this shoe go. That said, it's a really cool sneaker and I kind of wish I had tried wearing it without these orange laces because I feel like that would have been a cleaner look but you know what? I need to save up for a house, so uh, this shoe is on the chopping block. Continuing on with dunks, we've got a shoe that I know you've never seen before on this channel, and that's the Nike Dunk in the Brazil colorway. I just picked this sneaker up. It actually came in while I was filming this video, so I haven't had a chance to do any other videos on it, but um, I'm excited about it. I'm excited to rock it. After that, we've got the Syracuse Dunks, which might actually be my favorite recent dunk release. I think this shoe is so clean. I love the orange and white. I don't usually wear a lot of orange, but this shoe pops so nicely. I've worn this shoe a bunch since I've gotten it. I've only had it for like a month. Then we've got the Kentucky Dunks, which like the Brazils, I just picked up. It's not as crazy as the Syracuse's or the Brazils, but it's a clean pair of sneakers that uh, should be pretty easy to rock. But as you can tell by the uh, Flight Club tag that's still on there, I haven't worn it yet. Next up are the Nike SB Dunk Lows in the recent Diamond collab. The cool thing about this sneaker is that you can actually pull off the swooshes and move them down on the shoe to kind of give them a unique look. I did that for a while, but um, I've only worn this shoe probably seven or eight times, and I just don't know if I still have room for it in my collection. Collection, so this might be another shoe that I plan to get rid of. And then rounding off my dunks and my SB dunks, we've got the Nike SB Dunk Low Supreme. This shoe released back in 2012. It's the Elephant Print Supreme Dunk. I really love this colorway. I think it's it's really, really clean. This is another shoe that I never thought I would be able to have, and then someone gave me a really good deal at SneakerCon DC last year, and I had to pick it up. I've got to say, though, because the leather is so stiff, this shoe is pretty uncomfortable, especially after wearing it for a couple hours, but I love this shoe regardless, and I plan to keep this shoe forever. And then moving on to some of my favorite sneakers in my collection, my Retro Jordans. And we're going to start things off with the highest number of Jordans or Retro Jordans that I have, the 11s. The first pair of 11s that I have is this beautiful all red Win Like 96, I believe is the name of it. I got this from a Jordan brand event like in 2017 or 2018 when these shoes first released. It's a really interesting pair of sneakers and if these had dropped around when the Red Octobers dropped, these would have been insanely hyped and insanely limited and people would have been losing their minds over them. But Regardless, they are still a pretty popular sneaker, and even though they're all bright red and they're somewhat difficult to wear, I still find time to wear these guys. Next is a classic that re-released in 2018. We've got the Concord Air Jordan 11s. This is genuinely one of the most classic and iconic Jordans of all time. I love this sneaker. I should have doubled up. I did double up at one point, but then I ended up selling the other pair. Um, it's, it's an awesome shoe. I've worn it a bunch, and... Uh, I really wish I had doubled up. Then rounding off the 11s, we've got a shoe that I did double up on, the Air Jordan 11 Breads, and this is my favorite pair of 11s ever released. There's something about this bread colorway that I just can't get over. The black with the red and the white, it's so clean, and also the fact that I missed out on the 2012 pair definitely made me really want to have this pair and have as many pairs of these as I could, so uh, had to double up. After that, we've got a recent release with the Soulfly Air Jordan 10s. This shoe is a collaboration between Soulfly and Jordan brand for Soulfly's 10th anniversary. It reminds me so much of the linens, which were my favorite Air Jordan 10 colorway, except it comes in a much more premium makeup. The entire shoe comes in this like super hairy suede, which feels incredible. I'm so stoked to have it. I can't believe I got it for retail. I love this sneaker. Oh, and the Soulfly logo on the back looks like Seth Fowler, so that's kind of a plus. But <laughs> Next, we've got the Gatorade 6s, which is the other pair that came in that crazy Gatorade pack that I talked about earlier. It's an awesome pair of sneakers. It reminds me a lot of the Carmines because of the color blocking, except it comes in orange instead of red. I've worn it a couple times, not as much as I would like, but it mainly just sits in that pack because I think it looks really cool altogether. So uh, that's probably where it's going to stay. Moving into the 5s, we've got the Off-White Jordan 5s, which is a pair of sneakers that I did not think I would like as much as I do until I got it 
in hand, and I was like, dang, this sneaker is fresh. And then I started wearing it. I actually wore it on the trip to Portugal to work on my own sneaker, and it's so comfortable. It's so good looking. It's such a weird material makeup, but um, man, it's, it's clean as hell. I like this sort of black metallic colorway that Virgil went with, and I honestly probably should double up on this shoe because I'm sure the resale value of this shoe is gonna skyrocket. After that, we've got the recent release of the Air Jordan 5 Fire Reds. Back when I was a sneaker customizer, this is probably the shoe that I did the most customs on other than, I guess, Roshi's. And this shoe just has a special place in my heart for that reason. For some reason, I was never able to own a pair, maybe just because I didn't want to spend the money in college. But now that I have the chance to own one again and a new pair that's fresh and clean, I'm really excited to have it, and I love the Nike Air on the back. And then rounding off my fives, we've got probably one of the rarest sneakers in my collection with the Air Jordan 5 Tokyos. This shoe released exclusively at the Jordan brand store in Tokyo, and because of that, it's extremely difficult to come by. I somehow got super lucky and won this pair for free at ComplexCon, which I still kind of can't believe. It's an awesome pair of sneakers. I love the bright yellow color, and uh, I'm stoked to have it. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to wear it again, because I wore it once at ComplexCon, and I feel like that was a little bit nerve-wracking, so I think I might keep the snake case forever. Then moving into my Air Jordan 4s, we've got the Air Jordan 4 Bread. This is the 2019 release, and it also features the Nike Air on the heel, which is awesome. I just picked up this pair recently. I should have grabbed it back in 2019 when I had the chance to grab it for retail, but I didn't, and uh, I paid resale, so... You know, I'm kicking myself a little bit, but it's a dope pair of sneakers and I'm stoked to have it. After that, we've got the 2016 White Cement 4s. This is probably my favorite pair of Air Jordan 4s in my entire collection. I love the way this sneaker looks. I've worn it a bunch, as you can tell from the dust and scuffs and dirt and just like general wear and tear of this sneaker. I wish I had doubled up on this shoe, but it's such a clean look. I love the gray midsole with the splatter print. I love the red Jumpman on the tongue. I love the overall white aesthetic of the shoe and the Nike Air branding on the heel. It's such a clean sneaker. I know this shoe just retroed in 2016, but I wish they would retro it again. It's a fire sneaker. And then rounding off my fours, we've got the Air Jordan 4 Motorsport Alternate. And the reason this shoe is so special to me is because it's the very first shoe that Jordan Brand ever sent me, which is so crazy that they've sent me anything at all because it's one of those brands that you idolize growing up. And because of that, this shoe will never leave my collection. It's an awesome pair of sneakers, and I don't understand why this shoe isn't as hyped up as it could be because it's a fire colorway. Then moving on to the threes, we've got the Air Jordan 3 Katrina. This shoe was insanely limited back in 2006, and then Jordan Brand decided to retro it in 2017, 2018 maybe. Um, and because of that, it's now like a very popular common sneaker. But I've got to be honest, it's one of my favorite threes because the colorway is just so clean and so wearable. Continuing on, we get to the closest thing that I have to a white cement Air Jordan 3 with the Air Jordan 3 JTH. This shoe is sort of a weird collaboration between Justin Timberlake and Tinker Hatfield. What's interesting about this shoe is that it's based around Tinker Hatfield's original sketch of the Air Jordan 3, which featured a Nike swoosh on the lateral side and the Nike branding on the medial side. And while I don't mind that, I kind of wish it was just a white cement. 3. I get that this is more limited than a pair of white cement 3s, but I've always wanted a pair of those, and uh, I don't know. The Nike swoosh on the side is fine. It's 3M, which is kind of cool, but I wish I had a pair of white cement 3s. I've got to be honest, though, the Nike Air branding on the heel is nice, and the Tinker Hatfield sketches on the insole are pretty cool. And then moving on to my favorite pair of 3s of all time, we've got the black cement 3s. This shoe is just like the perfect sneaker. Everything about it, the materials, the colorway, the proportions. I think Tinker Hatfield absolutely knocked this shoe out of the park, and it's obvious that he did because this is a shoe that convinced Michael Jordan to stay with Nike. It's a beautiful pair of sneakers, and I absolutely should have doubled up. I don't know why I didn't. I think I might still. I don't know how expensive they are now, but it's so amazing looking. I, I just got to. And then moving into the last category of the video, we've got my favorite sneaker of all time, the Air Jordan 1. And starting off the Jordan 1s, we've got the Jordan 1 Bread Flyknit. This shoe was gifted to me by Jordan Brand in this crazy concrete box, which I actually still have. It's an awesome pair of sneakers. I love the colorway. Obviously, the Bread 1 is my favorite sneaker of all time, so of course I love the colorway. And I feel like the Flyknit Jordan 1s haven't gotten enough shine. They're a pretty solid sneaker. They're really cool, especially in the summer. And, um... They're comfortable. Next, we've got a recent pickup with the Royal Toe Air Jordan 1s. I just did a review of this sneaker, and I've got to be honest, as nice as it is, I, uh, I don't love it. And I think this is one of the sneakers that's actually going to leave my collection. I know that it's relatively popular, and I know people are hyped on it, and the colorway itself isn't bad. I just have so many pairs of 1s, I just don't need this shoe. I also only wore this shoe for the on-foot portion of the video, so it's basically brand new. Next up, we've got a pretty clean sneaker from last year, the Obsidian or UNC Air Jordan 1s. This is a very clean Jordan 1. I love the colorway. I love the cream or sail midfoot and midsole. I think the light blue with the dark blue is really nice as well. It's solid. It's not my favorite Jordan 1, but it's definitely a good looking shoe. After that, we've got another recent release with the 
pine green Air Jordan 1s. I love the way this shoe looks. I love the color blocking. I just don't love the construction or the materials. I feel like they're a little bit... Eh. Also, I'm not totally sure if I'm gonna keep this shoe, so make sure to check the website because it might be on there. Sticking with the Pine Greens, we've got the Pine Green 1.0s from 2018. This is a beautiful pair of sneakers. I love the color blocking on this shoe, and unlike the Pine Green 2.0s, I think the materials on this sneaker are on point. I don't love the fact that it's sort of a Celtics themed sneaker because I'm a Sixers fan, but at the end of the day, it's green. You know, I live in Philly. I can wear it as like an Eagles shoe if I ever go to any Eagles games, but <laughs> that's about it. Then we've got the Jordan 1 Court Purple 2.0s, which are a recent release, and I've got to say, I love this sneaker. I think it's beautiful. Purple is one of my favorite colors, and not just because I'm a Ravens fan. I just think it's such a clean look. It's actually a mix of my two favorite colors, blue and red. So uh, it's one of those sneakers and one of those colors that just really seems to pop for me. So far, I've only worn this shoe for a video, but I love this shoe. I'm excited to rock it more, and I plan to. Speaking of court purples, we've also also got the Air Jordan 1 Court Purple 1.0 from 2018. This shoe released around the same time as the Pine Green 1.0s back in 2018. And while I love this sneaker, I love the colorway, I love the materials, this shoe's cursed. Every time I wear it, my Ravens lose. So I can't wear this shoe during Raven season, so I guess right now is the only time I can really wear it and I haven't been wearing it. But um, I was wearing it at a bar one time watching a Ravens game and we started losing. And then I took the shoe off. I was kind of drunk, so <laughs> that's why I took the shoe off in a bar. But we started winning immediately after. And then I put the shoe back on because I came to my senses and we started losing again. That was only the first sign that this shoe was cursed. Then I wore it to a playoff game and we lost. So um, I think it's my fault. I think it's my fault we haven't made it to the Super Bowl in the last two years. But uh. Maybe I should get rid of this shoe. Next up, we've got the only Air Jordan 1 mid in my collection, the Air Jordan 1 mid Edison Chen. This shoe was crazy because it was gifted to me by Jordan Brand after it sold out, which was kind of like, that's insane. It was like the Christmas gift from last year. The material on this shoe is really cool because you can actually cut it off and reveal a gold and black colorway underneath. I think that's a cool touch. I don't plan to ever cut it off. I'm gonna wear this shoe into the ground and see if it comes off naturally, but I think it's an awesome sneaker and I love the swoosh that kind of fades into nothingness towards the heel. I think Edison Chen and Jordan Brand did an incredible job with this shoe. Next up, we've got one of the best releases of last year, the LA to Chicago Air Jordan 1s. The cool thing about this shoe, if you don't already know, is that this shoe is kind of like the Lance Mountains in that you can actually rub off the outer layer of paint and reveal a second colorway underneath. In this case, the shoe starts out as a Los Angeles Lakers themed colorway and then when you rub it off, it becomes a Chicago Air Jordan 1. It's an awesome concept, I love the sneaker, and actually the left side of the pair is rubbed off to reveal the Chicago look, and I feel like the Chicago on one side and the LA on the other side is definitely the best way to rock the pair. After that, we've got a classic sneaker from 2015, and that's the Air Jordan 1 Shattered Backboard. For some reason, this shoe has gained the reputation of being the best quality Air Jordan 1 ever, which might be true, but I think people need to realize that the quality of leather on this shoe isn't incredible. Like, it's a good feeling sneaker and it looks good, but it's not like the best quality leather in the world. It's still mass manufactured leather. That being said, it's still an awesome pair of sneakers. It's actually the first pair of shoes I think I ever bought off StockX. I bought this shoe back in 2000, I think 2015 actually, or 2016, I'm not sure, but I love this shoe. I got it for a great price and um, I'm stoked to still have it. Next up, we've got another instant classic with the 2018 Air Jordan 1 Bread Toes. In my opinion, the color blocking on this shoe is better than the black toes because it's slightly more balanced. I think having red on the toe really makes the shoe feel a little bit less lopsided. Really just an awesome sneaker and an awesome colorway overall. Speaking of the black toes, the next shoe up is the 2016 Black Toes. This OG Air Jordan 1 colorway is one of the cleaner Jordan 1 colorways, but obviously, as you guys heard, I do like the bread toe colorway a little bit better. It's still a great looking sneaker, and it's one that uh, I probably will never get rid of. For some reason, up until the last like three or four years, people just overlooked the shadows. It was a shoe that you could get for basically retail, at least in the previous version, for a really long time. And then for some reason, they became insanely popular, and now they're kind of expensive. I don't understand it. I always thought it was a great sneaker. It's one of the easiest to rock Air Jordan 1s, and uh, I'm really glad that they re-released this shoe back in 2018. It's an awesome sneaker, and I love rocking it. After that, we've got the 2017 Royal Air Jordan 1s. This is actually another shoe that I've doubled up on. I've got a whole nother DS pair in my closet, which surprisingly didn't get all the glitter on it like I thought that it would. It still looks pretty fresh, which I'm pretty impressed by, and uh, it's an awesome shoe. You can't really go wrong with a pair of Royals, and obviously, I really think that because I have two pairs. And then we get to my favorite colorway of all time on my favorite shoe of all time, the Bread Air Jordan 1s. Obviously, this is another pair that I doubled up on. In fact, I should have tripled up on it. Actually, I did triple up on it, but I sold that third pair, which was stupid. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> but really just my favorite color blocking on any shoe in the world. I feel like this shoe is just like the perfect sneaker. 
and I absolutely love it. And you guys can tell that I've worn it a lot because the uh, midsole is starting to show through the outsole. Continuing on with the classics, we've got the Air Jordan 1 Chicago's, which over the last couple months have skyrocketed in value, obviously because of the Last Dance documentary. This was the 2015 pair, which I actually bought off GOAT in 2015. In fact, I think it was my first GOAT pickup, which is kind of funny because the shattered backboards were my first StockX pickup. It's an awesome pair of sneakers. I've only worn it a couple times because it was like one of the first shoes that I paid over $300 for resale and I just didn't want to ruin it. So because of that, I've always just kind of kept it in a case. I've worn it probably to three or four Jordan brand events and maybe to one other sneaker event, I think. But um, I'm honestly kind of afraid to wear these. I know that's stupid, but it's just such a beautiful shoe. After that, we've got the Union LA Air Jordan 1 Black Toes. This collaboration is just so dope to me. It's such an interesting concept, and I love the execution of this shoe. I really do think this was the best collab of 2018, and possibly the best sneaker of 2018. I have a lot of great memories with this shoe, because I wore this shoe to Tokyo in the Philippines earlier last year, and uh, I actually met up with Owitz Teddy during that trip, and he just roasted me on this shoe, and I gotta be honest, I think it's because he's jealous. Um, he said it's because he hates Jordan 1s, but I think it's because he was just mad that he doesn't have this pair, and I so, um, no, but to be honest, it's an awesome shoe. I love it, and uh, I don't plan to get rid of this shoe anytime soon. And of course, you know, I have the other pair of the Union LA Jordan 1s. I got this pair off StockX. This is the Storm Blue colorway. And the reason this colorway is so important to me, or this shoe is so important to me, is because I proposed in this shoe, and it's actually got a toe crease because of me proposing. <laughs> That seems like a joke, but no, that's actually where that crease is from. Next up, we've got the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1s, which I think was the collaboration of last year. I think this shoe won 2019. It's an awesome pair of sneakers. I would say more about it, but you probably know everything there is to know about this shoe, so let's move on. Then, nearing the end of my collection, we've got the Off-White Air Jordan 1s in the UNC colorway. I bought this shoe from a friend of mine who won it on the sneakers app when they first had that shock drop. I paid way too much money for it. I think it's only now getting to that price again after two years. Um, it was an insane amount. I think it was 1800 bucks I paid for it, which is stupid. Um, it's an awesome pair of sneakers. I've worn it a couple times. It's dope. But was it worth 1800 bucks? Probably not. And then finishing off my collection on an insanely high note, we've got the signed Off-White Air Jordan 1 Chicago's. I actually won a contest to be able to go to this Nike event where this shoe released early. I think I had to write like an essay about why I love design or something like that. So my essay won, which is crazy. And because of that, I also got to meet Virgil Abloh. So not only was I able to buy this shoe early, I was able to meet Virgil, talk to him for about 10 minutes and have him sign the shoe. And he signed it Air Fowler, which is so nuts. I think that's insane. But having this shoe to commemorate that moment is just so special to me. And this shoe also, kind of gave my channel a jump start because this review was the one that really helped me blow up. If it wasn't for this video, I probably would not be where I am today. So um, it's just like such an important shoe to me for so many different reasons. And that officially wraps up my entire sneaker collection, or at least the sneakers that I could find. I'm sure there's some sneakers in the house somewhere that I couldn't find that are like under boxes or something like that, but that's everything that I know of. Once again, if you would like to grab a pair of the We Are Underdog Seth Fowler Origins, I've left a link to do so in the top of the description. Not only that, but if you would like to grab some of the sneakers that I'm selling from my own personal collection, you can go to sethfowlerstore.com, which is also linked in the description below. But now, I would love to know your thoughts on this collection and which shoes you liked best, so let me know in the comment section down below. Below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.